Hey guys, and today I'm going to be reviewing Illinois. Um, Illinois, I don't, there's people say it multiple ways. Um, this is my second time filming this review because it got, uh, kicked out of my camera. I deleted it by accident. But how, what do I have to say about this? Not enough words, not enough time. So it's actually going to be a pretty short review because I don't want to linger on and rant and ramble and repeat myself. This thing is going to win the best musical at the Tony. This is the next Hamilton. This is a magnum opus. It's a masterpiece. It's one of the best things playing in New York City right now. It trumps all of the shows in quality in every aspect. It is the best thing I've seen it in so long. Um, well, I wouldn't say so long, but like th this level of like, oh my god. And so it's based off of a... Uh, Steven's album, Illinois, um, that was released in 2005, um, and then of course, um, it was adapted into a musical, and it has all the same numbers from the album, um, they've just created, like, a story around it, and it's basically, um, set in Illinois, and it's set in a, uh, hard-to-reach place where individual people become a community by sharing stories and imagining each other lit by a campfire. The main two people, <coughs> the main two characters, are, is a gay couple. Um, and basically it tells the story, it's basically like Cats, but much better. You know, each song is its own story, it's its own contained thing, um, but there isn't a, a reoccurring th a plot involving our two characters that are gay and their relationship and their falling out and then their subsequent reunion. It's a spoiler review. I don't care. So yeah, so um, so yeah, so I have been looking forward to this. I love the album. Had been listening to it. Had been listening to it for years, and was super excited to see it. So obviously, I was gonna pretty much love it, you know, either way. And it was done brilliantly. All the numbers that I loved were done justice, and were done very well. I thought the dancing was spectacular. You know, dance shows can get repetitive, especially Cats, but this never got repetitive. It was always fresh and new and inventive and creative and just engaging. I was just engaged the whole time. I could not take my two eyes off of the stage. It was like you were, your eyes were glued to the stage and you couldn't look away because the dancing was so beautiful. The energy, the, the pure joy was palpable. It just leapt off that stage. And I wanted to cry. And not because it was emotional, but because they were so joyful and it made me so joyful. And it just felt like a, a true explosion of joy and love of of art and of um, creativity and of non-commercialized, like truly authentic stories, which is something that we're all craving these days. But yeah, so uh, again, I think that this is going to sweep at the Tonys. It's going to win Best Musical. Um, and I think that um, some highlight numbers were uh, the three, three stars and the long hike because they basically have the campers assembling around the campfire and there's this like weird dance that almost looks like um you know in, in movies when they edit people so they walk faster and uh, here's a club of it right, right now that they did in rehearsals um, and it looked stunning on stage. I was like, oh my god, like whoa, this is this is actually gonna be something special. And then um Zombies, a story about zombies I thought was an amazing number. Wasn't a huge fan of it when I listened to it the first time on the album, <clears throat> but hearing it in this context with the visuals and the, like, dancing that they do, and I think it's like they do, like, a, a jump of some, some, some kind was just um, beautiful and breathtaking. Um, a story about John Wayne Gacy Jr. was har was very dark, but I thought it was done very well and not, like, in a graphic way. I think by far the best number was Man of Metropolis, you know, and obviously it's a number about Superman. Um, and this number just was full of joy. It was full of, like, the guy that played um, the main, who played the Man of Metropolis was amazing. You know, it, just, it was, it wasn't acting in the traditional sense, but it was, it was acting. It was just a different kind. It was without, like, any verbal expressions. You know, it was all just people dancing, like, on the ground level, and then above them were the singers. Chicago is actually a very important number. Obviously, that is one of the more popular songs <coughs> on the album, but that basically gets us into the introduction of um, our two lovers. Um, the Sears Tower was so good. Basically, spoiler, the boyfriend commits suicide, and um, he jumps off of the bridge on the set. And um, But before he does that, there's... All the ensemble that jumps off before him, and it's very dark, but also very emotional and impactful. Um, and they do have a call. I think they had a moment when the lights went black, and I and I think they were still playing music or whatever. It doesn't normally happen in theater, but made an impact. And yeah, like I cannot. Um, 
say enough good stuff about this this musical. It is breathtaking. It is gorgeous. It, the sets, the costumes, the lighting, the dancing, the acting. I mean, I think I would even give Tony Award like nominations to the people that you know you'd consider the leads, which I think would be our two. As a, a couple, um, not gonna happen most likely, but I still think it should. I mean, I just can't say enough. Just go and see this when it comes to the St. James. You will not regret it. You're gonna love it. Even if you've never been a fan of the album, you'll love the music. You'll fall instantly in love with the story. It, it is so uh, uh, mentally stimulating and visually stimulating. And um, I'm just gonna stop wasting your time and, and say, go buy tickets, go and see it, and trust my word when I say this is officially the best new musical of 2024 and the best new musical of this season, and that's a fact.